afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we honor Second Lieutenant Norton, Second Lieutenant Hagen, and Second Lieutenant Myers on the occasion of their promotion to the rank of First Lieutenant. The presiding officers of today's ceremony are uh, Lieutenant Colonel Eric Hastings, PhD candidate from Hardy Rand Graduate School and Assistant Policy Researcher at the Rand Corporation, as well as Major Christine DeCock, PhD candidate from Hardy Rand Graduate School and Assistant Policy Researcher at the Rand Corporation. Charlie and said, I need help, he'll be there for you. Uh, 
Um, so you can always count on Charlie, and that's a, a, a quality and a leader um, that you definitely want to have. Uh, when I say reliable, uh, Charlie knows all the rules. If you ask him something, he will um, exploit every opportunity he has to um, flex the language of the rule, which even on the way here, uh, when we were driving here, he said, you said plan on being there at 2.30. He didn't say you had to be there at 2.30. And I was like, you know, that's a great point, Charlie. That's exactly what I intended. Um, but for this ceremony, I also asked him, I was like, hey, Charlie, tell me like an interesting fact. And so I, and since he, since I worded it that way, he gave me this interesting fact, which I'm going to read to you because I thought it was very interesting, uh, word for word. He said, see, see snakes that, or sorry, <laughs> see snakes that live in the ocean can't drink salt water. They have to drink from a thin layer of fresh water on the surface after it rains. The Pacific is too dry and therefore uh, they can't live there. So now you know a random fact about sea snakes and he clearly knew what my intent was but I was not specific and so that makes, but that also makes him a great policy researcher because he's going to know who's going to flex those rules and those lines and uh, he will always be and there's also a great quality of commander knowing all the rules because then you know where your legal obligations lie um, in the future and you're going to be able to flex them for your people and maximize uh, your opportunities for your people. So while it is um, kind of uh, graining, I don't know what the right word is, it's a little, a little tough on my brain sometimes, I appreciate uh, your, your attention to detail and that reliable um, aptitude. And then uh, hardworking. Charlie uh, has always been hardworking. He's always the, uh, uh, when pre-COVID times, he was always the first one to class. He's always the first one on the mic. If the teacher has a question and it's a yes or no question, you can count on Charlie to be the yes man. Uh, which I think I talked about in your Space Force ceremony. Uh, but I'm excited to see where your career takes you. Um, I honestly think it is boundless and you know the Air Force is capped by space and I don't know about cap space so I think uh, your opportunities are severely uh, boundless and uh, I look forward to hearing you know is the Space Force actually like the Netflix series of the Space Force uh, but we'll, we'll more to come uh, but thank you um, for all attending and celebrating uh, Charlie uh, I'm excited uh, this is a rare opportunity and I would bet this is the first Space U.S. Force first promotion ceremony on this boat so that's a, that's a first for your career you can put that on the resume please stand for the reading of the promotion order publish the order attention to orders the president of the united states acting upon the recommendation of the secretary of the air force has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism integrity and abilities of the second lieutenant Martin. in view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade second lieutenant Martin is promoted to the grade of the first lieutenant United States Space Force, effective the 30th day of May, 
location, hopefully a place you guys will remember for the rest of your, uh, rest of your lives. So I have the honor of promoting Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Ty Kyle Pate. So it can be a bit of a challenge coming up with things to say for our first Lieutenant promotion ceremonies. After all, they've only been in the Air Force for two years, and uh, so far it's just been uh, RAND, not the Operational Air Force. So with that being said, when I was looking for things to say about Kyle, I realized I didn't really have an issue decide on that? Well, in good uh, analytical fashion, he decided on, he developed five criteria. Hockey team, small, STEM focused, low cost, more professional slash less partying. So the academy easily won from his, uh, from his list. And what a win it was for the academy, as you'll turn out to, uh, as it will turn out for them. Coincidentally, 2015 was when I began teaching at USAPA. And Colin and I crossed paths a few times. I enjoyed hockey and tried to get involved a little bit with the team, uh, tutoring and also acting as a mentor for a few hockey players. But as those of you who know Kyle, you can imagine that Kyle didn't need much in the way of uh, tutoring. Uh, he was very sharp academically. Um, and nevertheless, um, I still knew of Kyle. While teaching calculus three and grading exams, his name would consistently be towards the top. It also wasn't uncommon to see Kyle's name on the box results. So all in all, he was a top performer at USAFA, so much so that his uh, junior year, I believe, he was named Air Force Cadet of the Year in academic, 2000, in academic year 2017-2018. And that's uh, Air Force Cadet of the Year, not just USAFA Cadet of the Year. So quite an accomplishment. But to sum up his uh, time at Yusuf, I probably reach out to his coach, or Frank Saratori. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll read his uh, remarks, saying, 
Kyle is the most highly decorated cadet hockey player I've had in my 25 years at the Air Force Academy. Militarily, he was a squadron commander. Academically, he was an NCAA academic All-American and USAPA distinguished grad. Athletically, he was a top eight player on two AHA championship teams, both of which advanced to the NCAA Elite Eight. Kyle is an extraordinary young man who continues to make us very proud. He is the epitome of the Air Force Academy's motto of excellence in all we do. So, quite the remarks from your former coach. All right, let me skip ahead a few steps. I didn't really get to know Kyle until about August 4th, 2019, a month or so after he arrived here. And I know that date because it was a big day for me. It was the last of the SoCal Six Pack of Peaks. And this peak was the most strenuous and the uh, toughest of the six. So I had the uh, fortune of doing the first five, but when I uh, asked for um, any volunteers to come with me, uh, Kyle was the only three of the new uh, first uh, the new uh, lieutenants that uh, decided to come along. This hike was uh, 19 miles long, a mile in elevation gain, and the peak was about 11,000 meters, so uh, quite a uh, challenge, but it was surprisingly no challenge at all for Kyle, who finished the ascent uh, to the top first of the three of us that went. The descent was a different story, but uh, I won't uh, rub that in Kyle's face too much. But since arriving at Rand, Kyle has uh, not only overcome hey, the challenge of one of SoCal's toughest peaks, but the challenges associated with the, the PRGS program. Um, he's done amazingly academically. Uh, also, he's a teaching assistant, and he has excelled in uh, the Rand OJT programs for math and Arroyo. So it might be easy to let all of the success in such a short career go to one's head. That is far, the case, far from the case with Kai. And I'll finish these remarks from his uh, prior guest review. I wanted to point out that you are the best, nicest student to the party ran AAs. You are very generous and thankful, and they notice and appreciate that. It's clear you have the maturity and drive to be a top performer in this program, and that you have made the most of your opportunities available at RAN. And we look forward to supporting you along the way. The future is bright in the Air Force and Space Force, in no small part due to Ty, Charlie, and Diana.
said that Frank Serratori was going to have some remarks uh, shared in public. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, Colonel Hastings was there. Uh, last night, yeah. Also has done third. Uh, got those three background checks on all of the tests in the program. We didn't know that, um, so I appreciate that. And uh, he's also the reason we're here today on this battleship. And uh, it's a great privilege and honor to be here. So thank you to all the staff for having us. Um, thank you to the friends and uh, who are here in person and the family who will be watching this later. Um, couldn't be here without you. And uh, I also want to thank the Cost and the, and the other LTs for putting the show on. Uh, this is fantastic, Veggie, being on flag duty, I appreciate it. Um, and then this is also a very special day because uh, there's there's four people here who have uh, been through the highs and the lows for the last four years. Uh, we've got Trey Arnold, Charlie Martin, Diana Myers, Ray Carnell, all people I've lived with. Some of your classmates uh, came up with a few uh, words to uh, help describe you. And let me uh, read this off as I was told to read it as fast as I can to uh, describe uh, how your classmates uh, view you. So this says, Kyle Hake, PhD candidate, Party Ran Graduate School, May 28, 2021. Let it be known that on this day, Kyle Hake is a PhD in hockey play in Marina Del Trey and tips for glasses wearing alpha in tennis play Camino listening vintage in future fi fighter pilot in Einstein energy promotion promoting nuclear physics in carrot chomping barrel season in paper in drink swamping family game in piano play and air frying Hermosa in so essentially in sparkle timing air cutting Hermosa in Always surfing, turtle racing, violent luminescent, surprising, bed making, low stressing. First lieutenant of the United States Air Force on ice. Alphabet is uh, Diana Myers. Uh, if you don't know Diana, um, she has a long military background. Her grandfathers, her uncles, her dad uh, all served. Um, and uh, she is the first female in her family um, to serve in the military. And that's a trend with Diana. She is the first. She is um, always getting things done first. Um, and <laughs> She has accomplished so much um, doing that. Um, and her family, uh, they're in Alabama right now. Um, but uh, you would think, you know, Alabama, like this girl, like she probably hasn't been outside the United States. She has been to 20 different countries. Her first time living in the United States was when she joined the military at the Air Force Academy, um, which is uh, crazy, crazy. Um, but Diana is one of the most cultured people I have ever met, and she provides a unique perspective to every conversation. Um, and some people, you might look at Diana and just think, wow, this gorgeous girl, um, like, you know, uh, and then when she talks, everybody stops to listen. Um, cause she provides, um, just a different perspective than, um, a lot of us that are homegrown in the United States. She's been all over uh, the world. 
And so I really appreciate her educating me um, and teaching me that, you know, while we have these great United States ideals, there's other ideals out there um, that we can learn from and, and admire. Um, and Diana, she spent a lot of time in Seoul, South Korea. She learned a lot about Soju. Um, and if you don't know, that is that is what you will be offered if you are at a dinner or a, a if you're at a Diana's LA downtown live-in lifestyle, uh, you will be offered a Soju. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, Diana, um, she works harder than anyone I've ever met. She's the first to defend her um, dissertation proposal um, and of any of our classmates, even our civilian ones as well. Um, so I'm just, just so impressed by her and I'm more impressed by um, her level to be a, a human as well. When we like asked her classmates for um, those adjectives, they were just flooding in and I had to like pet some because I was like, dang, this doesn't fit on this award. So I apologize, I have a longer list for you. Uh, but uh, that's coming. But anyway, um, I just want to say um, thank you for the opportunity uh, to promote you. And I'm so excited to see so many more firsts throughout your career. Um, and I think that the limits are, uh, you know, bounded, bounded to the Air Force, not the Space Force. But, uh, you know, I could see uh, uh, the first Intel officer CSAP. I'm going to put it right here. Uh, it's going to happen. Non-rated. I'm okay with it. Let's move on. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, uh, I uh, will uh, get this thing started.